Why are we not taught money in school? Where do we learn our lessons about money? We learn it usually at home, we learn it about the environment that we're around, we learn it about other people that we see, that we want to emulate. And one of the things that we often have is maybe fear around money, maybe lack of confidence around money, or maybe we have way too much confidence that we think that we could do this, that we could accomplish it without really having any plans or without really having any guidance or without really having any blueprint to accomplish what we want. And so, and even if you do have that much confidence, how organized are you? And where should you prioritize how you invest, how you save, how you derive income from your investments, how you pay your taxes on investments, and how you're given the rest of the money to the loved ones and the families that you have after we're no longer here. So, some of the ways that we can do that is understanding the hierarchy of money, the hierarchy of needs in terms of your economic situations. We're going to use two different models. One is passive, that's how most of the people use money, and one is called smart money, or what we call smart money, more efficient, there's a lot more due diligence that goes into it, and so that could give you a better understanding of how wealthy people and how people have experience with money use it to their advantage. So I want to start with three different golden rules. The first golden rules is pay yourself first. And so when you pay yourself first, you want to make it automatic. And what does that mean? Making it automatic is just like you're paying other bills, right? Where you have the gas bill or the cable bill or the phone bill or what have you, why would you consider somebody else before yourself, before your future? So paying yourself first and making it automatic ensures that you're not only gonna be okay now, but your future will thank you because you did something really powerful for it. And the passive way of doing it is spending first, and then if there's anything left, you say, I might save that. But we all know what happens, right? There's a lot of temptations out there, and there's a lot of things that we can spend money on. Maybe it's that movie, maybe it's that game, maybe it's this luxury thing, or shoes, right? It could be a whole bunch of things. Maybe it's a car, maybe whatever it is. Spending first and saving later maybe is not the most effective way of doing it. So what smart money is doing is not so much different, but they have a different approach. They use the save first method and then they have the freedom and liberty to spend what's left. And it might not seem much different, but using that analogy will help you get ahead in life. And if you read anything about the million next door, one of the ways that they do it is they save first and then spend later, right? So that's the first golden rule. The second rule is having your money working for you. And what does that mean, having money work for you? If your money is not working, it's considered to be lazy money. Lazy money is money that is not earning you more than an inflation rate. What is inflation rate? Inflation rate is the depreciation of your dollar, right? Your money will be worth less as time goes along. In fact, on average, every 22 to 24 years, your money will actually be worth half of what it is right now. So, if you read a lot about what Warren Buffett is talking about, the most powerful money investment, if you will, is compound interest. The most powerful use of money is making it keep up with inflation. So, if it's not earning you more than 2 to 4%, then you're essentially losing money. So, 
using financial tools like checking account or saving account or money market account or CDs, although it's good for safety, but if you invest in that way, you might be losing money because it's not keeping up with inflation. So that's the second rule. The third rule is having other people's money work for you. And the perfect example of how you have other people's money work for you is you actually buying real estate, right? When you go to the bank to get money to buy a house, whose money are you actually using, right? You might be putting three and a half percent as a down payment. You might be putting 10 percent or 20 percent, but the other 80 percent is other people's money. The banks get it from other people and they lend it to you and they make interest and they benefit in by earning money but you're benefiting because when you bought this house or when you bought this business when that business or this real estate appreciate or goes up in value even though you only put three and a half or ten percent or twenty percent you get to keep a hundred percent of the growth or the appreciation of that money. So you're using other people's money to grow your own. And that's a very effective way and that's a very much of a smart money method to grow your wealth.